Hey there guys, this is Richard, your host, with another marvellous video. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, mutants and non-mutants, welcome to the video that will make Magneto's helmet shake with laughter, the one that will make Apocalypse want to take a break from his world domination plans, and the one that will make Mr. Sinister wish he could clone himself just to enjoy it twice. That's right, we're talking about the major X-Men villains, the bad guys that make Professor X's bald head tingle with excitement. So, sit back, relax, and get ready to laugh cry, and maybe even root for the bad guys. Just don't tell Wolverine we said that. <laughs> it's time to delve into the world of the X-Men's most infamous foes, and trust us, it's going to be mutant-tastic. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you. Aha! Let's begin. Sabretooth. Well, 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 well. Look whom we have here. Sabretooth, the feral mutant and arch nemesis of Wolverine. This guy is a real piece of work, let me tell you. First of all, Sabretooth's childhood was an absolute nightmare. He was abused by his father and had his mutation manifest at the tender age of nine when he killed his pediatrician. Hmm, talk about a rough start in life. And let's not forget about Sabretooth's tendency to stalk and kill human beings for pleasure. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Who does that? This guy has earned the nickname The Slasher, and it's not hard to see why. But let's talk about Sabretooth's powers, shall we? This guy is basically a supercharged version of Wolverine. He has an accelerated healing factor that can heal anything from broken bones to destroyed organs in a matter of minutes. Oh, and his senses are off the charts. He can see in complete darkness, track people by their scent, hmm, and hear things from up to three miles away. Plus, he's super strong and has those oh-so-lovely claws made of a substance stronger than human bones. But here's the kicker. Sabretooth's bones are laced with adamantium, <laughs> just like Wolverine's. And while it makes his skeleton, fangs, and claws unbreakable, it also decreases the effectiveness of his healing factor. So, you know, he's got that going for him. All in all, Sabretooth is really something. But you can't deny that he's a formidable opponent and a force to be reckoned with. Magneto one of the most complex and compelling characters in the Marvel Universe. As a Holocaust survivor, he has a unique perspective on the struggle for mutant rights. He believes that mutants are a superior species and should take their rightful place as rulers of the world due to the way humans have historically treated mutants. Magneto's powers are incredibly impressive. He can control the entire electromagnetic spectrum, which allows him to manipulate magnetic fields and metal objects to his will. He can generate force fields, increase his strength to superhuman levels, and even manipulate other forms of energy. Yeah, and let's not forget about that helmet of his, which is specially designed to block telepathic assaults. Despite his villainous tendencies, Magneto has fought alongside the X-Men and other heroes on numerous occasions, even becoming their leader at one point. He's also the father of Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, who were originally part of his brotherhood of evil mutants. In recent years, Magneto has become more of an anti-hero, willing to protect mutants from humans at any cost. Though he often clashes with the X-Men, he's also shown a willingness to work with them when their goals align. All in all, Magneto is a fascinating character with a rich history and complex motivations. Whether you love him or hate him, you can't deny that he's one of the most powerful and compelling mutants in the Marvel Universe. Apocalypse. Lay out the red carpet, because here comes Apocalypse, one of the oldest and most powerful mutants in the Marvel Universe. Born en Sabah Nur in ancient Egypt, he was abandoned as an infant but raised by the Sandstormers, who taught him the philosophy of survival of the fittest. After the destruction of his tribe, Nur sought revenge on the pharaoh Rama Tut, and his mutant abilities fully emerged in his enraged state, transforming him into the nearly invincible being known as Apocalypse. Apocalypse's powers are truly godlike. He has complete control over his body on an atomic scale, allowing him to alter his size and density at will and adapt to any environment or disease. He's near invulnerable to physical harm, has great regenerative abilities, and is immune to aging. He doesn't require food or water to survive and has immense knowledge of science and strategy. In addition to his physical abilities, Apocalypse also has access to advanced alien technology and is a master of manipulation and intimidation. His powers include shapeshifting, teleportation, superhuman strength that can rival the Hulk, absorption, and projection of energy, and resistance to telepathic attacks, and even limited use of telekinesis and telepathy himself. With everything considered, Apocalypse is a truly fearsome opponent and a major threat to the X-Men and other heroes in the Marvel Universe. Omega Red Wow, Omega Red is a truly intimidating villain with a dark and twisted history. Originally known as Arkady Rosovich, 
He was a cruel and violent man who served with the USSR Spetsnaz in the early 1960s. After his crimes were discovered, he was forced into the Soviet version of the Weapon X program and transformed into the deadly cyborg known as Omega Red. Omega Red's mutant abilities include the ability to secrete pheromones that can cause organic life to weaken and eventually die. He also has retractable tentacles made of radioactive carbonadium that can drain the life force of his enemies and victims. Without the material known as carbonadium synthesizer, c -Synth, Omega Red must drain the life force of a victim him on a daily basis or suffer from the devastating effects of his pheromones. Despite his criminal history, Omega Red is an experienced fighter and strategist, trained in the Russian military and the KGB. He wears an armored exoskeleton that increases his resistance against injury and has become a feared criminal leader. I mean, it's no wonder that Banshee, Wolverine, and Nightcrawler had a tough time dealing with this guy. Lady Deathstrike. Well, let me tell you about Lady Deathstrike, the cyborg assassin with a tragic past and some seriously impressive skills. Yuriko Oyama is the daughter of a former Japanese kamikaze pilot turned crime lord who scarred her and her brother's faces in a ritual designed to show his shame for failing his country. Talk about some serious daddy issues. But that's just the beginning of her wild ride. Yuriko eventually became Lady Deathstrike, with a skeleton infused with adamantium that makes her practically unbreakable. She can lift about a ton, has superhuman speed, agility and stamina, and her fingers have been replaced by 12-inch adamantium claws. She's basically a walking weapon of mass destruction. But how did she survive the process of bonding adamantium to her bones, you ask? Well, it was revealed that the magical spiral was involved in the process. Yeah, <laughs> you heard that right. Magic saved her life. I guess science and technology can only take you so far. Despite her impressive skills, Lady Deathstrike is emotionally disturbed, and that can interfere with her effectiveness as an assassin. But hey, at least she's fluent in Japanese and English, and can operate naval ships and aircrafts. Maybe she can start a new career as a bilingual pilot. And to top it all off, her last visit with Donald Pierce resulted in an upgrade that gave her a cybernetic healing factor similar to Wolverine's. So, not only is she practically indestructible, but she can heal herself too. Huh, talk about a total package. Just don't get her on her bad side, or she might just slice and dice you with those adamantium claws. Wolverine can attest to that fact. Stop! Silver Samurai well, now it's time to meet the Silver Samurai, the sword-wielding mutant with a shady past. First of all, he's the illegitimate son of a Japanese crime lord, so, you know, he's got some skeletons in his closet. He's also the brother of Wolverine's first love, which makes for some awkward family reunions. But don't let his family drama fool you. The Silver Samurai is a master of Kenjutsu and an expert in the art of Bushido. He can wield a katana like it's nobody's business and is a formidable opponent in hand-to-hand -hand combat. He's even got a suit of lightweight steel alloy body armor, modeled after traditional samurai armor, which is both stylish and protective. But the real kicker is his mutant ability to generate a field of tachyonic energy around his katana, allowing it to cut through almost any material on Earth except for adamantium. That's one sharp sword, folks. Oh, he also has a teleportation ring, which makes him even more stealthy and mobile. However, I must warn you that the Silver Samurai isn't exactly a fair fighter. He's been known to cheat and use deception as a weapon. I guess when you come from a family of crime lords, you learn to play dirty. Mutant and proud. Mystique, aka Raven Darkholm, is one villain you don't want to mess with. She's a major antagonist in the X-Men comics and media, and she's got a reputation for being a bit of a mean girl. She's a cruel and treacherous ally of Magneto, and has worked as part of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. But let's be real, with a name like that, did we really expect anything less? Mystique is one of the X-Men's most deceptive and cunning opponents, and she's happy to do whatever it takes to get the upper hand and ensure mutant supremacy. She's even tried to kill her own adoptive daughter, Rogue, and son, Nightcrawler, on multiple occasions. That sure is some tough love right there. But let's talk about Mystique's mutant abilities, which are pretty dang impressive. She can psionically shift the cells and tissues of her body to change her physical appearance. Oh, and she's so good at it that she can precisely duplicate another person's retina pattern, finger and palm prints and even vocal cords. She can also shift the placement of her vital organs to avoid damage from attacks, which is a pretty handy trick. And that's not all. Mystique has been exposed to extraterrestrial radiation that has enhanced her shape-shifting powers. She now has a healing factor, enhanced strength, and can even grow wings and extra limbs. She's basically a one-woman army. However, 
Mystique can't duplicate the powers of the people she imitates, so she can't teleport like Nightcrawler or shoot lasers out of her eyes like Cyclops. And while she can maintain a form of someone similar in height, weight, and build indefinitely, the longer she maintains a form that's significantly different from her own, the greater the strain on her body. But despite these limitations, Mystique is a skilled hand-to-hand -hand combatant and marksman. She's even able to tell when someone else is pretending to be someone else, just by their body language. Talk about a keen eye for detail. Mystique is one villain who has got it all. Cunning, ruthlessness, and shape-shifting abilities that would make even the most talented cosplayer jealous. Piss her off, and she might just shape-shift into your worst nightmare. A mutation? Viper. Okay, let's talk about Viper, the former terrorist leader of Hydra, enemy of Captain America, Nick Fury and Wolverine, and a total badass in her own right. Her real name is Ophelia Sarkissian, and she had a pretty rough start in life. Her parents were killed during a revolution in her home country, and she was orphaned at a young age. But instead of letting that defeat her, Viper became one of the most skilled and dangerous criminals in the world. She was trained by Kraken and worked her way up the ranks of Hydra, eventually becoming its leader and earning the nickname Madame Hydra. So, what makes Viper such a formidable opponent? Well, for starters, she's got the physical abilities of an Olympic athlete. Strength, agility, and stamina that make her a force to be reckoned with. She's also an expert in martial arts, guns, knives, and swords, and she's got a killer sense of style to boot. But Viper's real power is not just in her physical abilities, it's in her intellect and her strategic mind. She's a brilliant tactician, able to control huge criminal organizations and outsmart even the most skilled superheroes. Yeah. And she's got a few tricks up her sleeve too, like poison fangs and lipstick, gases that can knock out her enemies, and even a teleportation ring. But perhaps the most interesting thing about Viper is her post-death transformation. After she died, she somehow came back to life with a green mass on her head that kept her alive. This mass has tentacles that she can control either with her mind or her instincts, making her even more deadly and unpredictable. There you have it. Viper, the ruthless criminal mastermind with killer physical abilities, a brilliant mind, and a creepy green mass on her head. Not someone you'd want to mess with. Yeah, that's for sure. What the hell are you? X-24 X-24 is a clone of Wolverine, created by the Alkali Corporation and Transigen Project in the movie Logan. He was created after X-23, also known as Laura Kinney, escaped with the goal of recapturing her. X-24 is essentially a younger and more feral version of Wolverine, with superhuman strength, incredible regenerative abilities, and a skeleton laced with adamantium. He also has three retractable claws on each hand, which are again made of adamantium. X-24 tracked down X-23, who was on the run with Logan and Professor X from the Alkali Corporation. In a brutal attack on the Munson household, X-24 killed Catherine and Nate Munson, as well as fatally wounded Professor X. Logan and Will Munson returned home and a fight erupted, but X-24 was able to capture X-23. Days later, the Corporation tracked Logan and X-23 down again and unleashed X-24 once more. In a drugged and enraged state, Logan fought X-24 but was fatally wounded. Fortunately, X-23 was able to kill X-24 with an adamantium bullet. While X-24 is incredibly powerful, with superhuman strength, durability, and regenerative abilities, he's not invincible. He has limited regenerative abilities compared to Wolverine, and is vulnerable to extreme injuries and brain damage. Additionally, his bloodlust and rage make him easy to trick, as he lacks tactical thinking abilities. <laughs> William Stryker Well, 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 look who we have here. It's none other than William Stryker, the guy who couldn't handle having a mutant child and decided to murder his entire family. I mean, talk about an overreaction, am I right? But hey, at least he didn't let his failure as a father stop him from achieving his true calling, becoming a religious extremist and founding the Purifiers. But you know what they say, with great power comes great responsibility. And in Stryker's case, that responsibility was to lead the war against all mutants. Because, apparently, mutants are the root of all evil in the world. I mean, forget about poverty, corruption, and climate change. Huh, all of it is the mutants' fault. But hey, at least Stryker was a man of many talents. He could adapt to any situation, had agility like a ninja, and was a master of unarmed combat. Ah, and let's not forget his technopathy skills, because nothing screams, I am a badass, like being able to control technology with your mind. Since William Stryker decided that his life's calling was to terminate the mutants, he found himself as the enemy of many mutants, such as Cyclops, Mystique, and Pixie. William Stryker might have been a murderous religious extremist, but at least he had a sense of humor about it. Just kidding, he didn't. Don't be like William Stryker. So 
Sebastian Shaw. Sebastian Shaw, the man who can absorb any form of kinetic energy. I mean, talk about having a handy skill to have. Want to punch him? Nope, that just makes him stronger. Want to shoot him? Sorry, that's just going to give him a boost. It's like trying to fight a never-ending game of whack-a-mole. But Shaw didn't just become a powerful mutant by absorbing energy. Oh, oh, oh no, he also had a brilliant mind for business. He went from ranks to riches in no time and even made his own company, Shaw Industries, which specialized in making munitions for the US military. Talk about diversifying your portfolio. Let's not forget his time with the Hellfire Club. He climbed the ranks like a pro and eventually became the Black King. I mean, who wouldn't want to be the leader of a group called the Hellfire Club? It just sounds so cool and edgy. But of course, apart from responsibility, with great power, one also gains great enemies. Shaw faced challenges from all sides, including his own son Magneto, Bishop, Beast and Cyclops. It's like everyone wanted a piece of the kinetic energy sponge. Sebastian Shaw is one mutant you do not want to mess with. He's got the brains, the brawn, and the ability to absorb any attack thrown at him. Plus, he's got a killer fashion sense with that Hellfire Club attire. Cable. Alrighty, let's talk about the Metal Man himself, Cable. This guy is like a walking Swiss army knife. If that knife could also shoot energy pulses and time travel. He's got bionic everything, from his arm to his eye and he's not afraid to use them. Now, I know what all of you must be thinking. Isn't Cable supposed to be all serious and brooding and stuff? Well, yes, but let's be real here. This is Deadpool we're talking about. If anyone can bring out the funny side of a cyborg mutant, it's the Merc with a mouth. First of all, let us address the elephant in the room, Cable's arms. This thing is so bulletproof, it could probably survive a direct hit from a nuke. And not only that, but Cable uses it to do all sorts of things, from grappling buildings to magnetically attracting his rifle back to him. I mean, talk about handy, pun intended. And then we have Cable's shield generation ability. He can just pop up a force field whenever he feels like it, like he's some kind of futuristic superhero. I bet he uses it to protect himself from those annoying telemarketers. But my personal favourite thing about Cable has got to be his time travel device. This thing is like a fancy wristwatch that can transport you through the ages. I can just imagine him using it to go back in time and give his younger self some fashion tips. No, no, no. Do not wear that shoulder pad. Trust me, it's not a good look. All in all, Cable may be a serious character, but that doesn't mean we can't appreciate his quirks and abilities. Who knows, maybe in the next Deadpool movie, we'll see him break out into a cyborg version of the Macarena. If anyone can make it happen, it's Cable. Uh, that's a negative, Soul Survivor. Luck is not a superpower. We are so fucked. No. Domino. Meet Domino, the luckiest mutant in town. With the power of probability manipulation, she can make just about anything happen in her favor. And let me tell you, like some of the other villains we've met so far, she's also not afraid to use it. Now, you might be thinking, isn't luck just a matter of chance? Well, not for Domino. Her powers are so strong that she can even make the impossible possible. Need to hit a target that's like a mile away? Hmm. No problem. Domino has got you covered. Want to shut down a nuclear reactor with just a stray shot? <laughs> Easy peasy. But don't let her luck-based powers fool you. Domino is also a skilled assassin and martial artist. She's got the reflexes and agility of a superhero, thanks to the bioelectric pulses that guide her movements during high-stress situations. Plus, she also has a mean aim with a gun and can take down even the toughest opponents with ease. Of course, even the luckiest of mutants have their weaknesses. And for Domino, it's electrophobia. Hmm, a crippling fear of chickens. I mean, who can blame her? Those beady little eyes and sharp beaks can be pretty intimidating. But when it comes down to it, Domino is a force to be reckoned with. She's got the skills, the luck, and the weapons to take on just about anything. So, if you ever find yourself in a sticky situation, just remember, all you need is a little bit of Domino's luck on your side. Pyro. Meet Pyro. The mutant with the hottest powers around. With the ability to manipulate flames, he can turn even the smallest match into a raging inferno. But Pyro's not just a one-trick pony. He's a master of fire sculpting, able to manipulate the particles of the flame to turn it into specific shapes and even make it solid. He can create a bird of fire to swoop down on his opponents or a smoke cloud to asphyxiate their breathing. He also has a trusty flamethrower attack, which he carries on his back and can instantly produce large amounts of fire at the flick of a wrist. Of course, even with his fiery powers, Pyro has his weaknesses. He may be immune to the effects of fire that he personally manipulates, but he's still not invincible. He needs to wear a special insulated suit to protect him from non-controlled fires, and he's not able to create fire from scratch. He needs a small flame to start with before he can take control of it. But don't let his weaknesses fool you, Pyro is a force to be reckoned with, and he knows how to use his powers to his advantage. So, if you ever find yourself facing off against this fiery mutant, be prepared to feel the heat, because Pyro's flames are not to be underestimated. Ah! 
Dark Phoenix. Jean Grey, also known as Dark Phoenix, is a mutant with incredible telepathic abilities. The antagonist to a majority of X-Men characters, she can read thoughts, project her own thoughts, and even affect the emotions and sensations of others. Her telepathy is so powerful that she can manipulate the minds of humans and animals with higher order intelligence, such as dolphins, ravens, and dogs. Dark Phoenix is also able to defend herself and others with her telepathy. She can cloak her presence and the use of her abilities from being detected by other psychics and psychic entities. She can also create psychic shields to protect herself and the minds of others. Additionally, she can create telepathic illusions and alter the physical appearance of herself and others using telepathic camouflage. With her telepathic manipulation abilities, Jean can alter the memories and personalities of others and induce temporarily mental or physical paralysis. She can even transfer her mind and powers into other host bodies if her own physical body is killed. Her telepathic abilities also allow her to heal mental trauma through psychic surgery and stimulate or deaden the pain and pleasure centers in a person's brain. Jean's telepathic abilities are not limited to the physical plane. She can project her astral form onto the astral plane or the physical plane, which allows her to travel vast distances and manipulate her environment. She can also sense the presence of other superhuman mutants within a small radius of herself by perceiving their distinctive mental radiations. Jean Grey's telepathic abilities are incredibly powerful and versatile, which makes her a force to be reckoned with in both the physical and mental realms. Emma Frost. Oh boy, Emma Frost really has a lot going on with her mutant abilities. It's like she's a one-woman superhero team, all on her own. First off, let's talk about her telepathy. Emma Frost can do it all. Mind control, memory erasure, mental pain, and even personality alteration. It's like she's a walking, talking Swiss army knife of psychic powers. And don't even get me started on her psychic shields. With those bad boys up, she's practically Iron Man level invincible when it comes to mental intrusion. But wait, there's more! This villain of the X-Men can also create telepathic illusions, clog her presence from other mutants and psychic entities, and even camouflage herself and others to appear invisible. I mean, is there anything she can't do with her mind? And let's not forget about her diamond form. When Emma Frost transforms, she becomes as hard as diamond and can resist just about anything thrown her way. Plus, she doesn't need to eat, drink, or breathe while in diamond form, which is pretty convenient if you ask me. But be warned, when she's in her diamond form, she can be a bit, um, cold-hearted. Get it? Because she's a diamond. <laughs> okay, maybe that one was a bit of a stretch. But seriously, Emma's diamond form gives her superhuman strength, stamina, and durability. She's practically unstoppable. And if that's not enough, she can even shoot light spears made of pure psionic energy. <laughs> Talk about overkill. Emma Frost is one mutant you do not want to mess with. She's got more powers than you can shake a stick at, and she's not afraid to use them. Just remember... If you ever need a telepathic therapist or a mutant to take down mind control cults, Emma's your girl. Just don't make her mad. Yes, or she might just turn into diamond and give you the cold shoulder. Come lead. Azazel. So, Azazel is this mutant from biblical times, which is pretty impressive considering most people can't even trace their family tree back more than a few generations. He's the ruler of the Neofam which is basically a race of demonic-looking mutants. I mean, who needs a Halloween costume when you're already a demon mutant? <laughs> Azazel has a bit of a superiority complex, claiming that the Earth and everything on it belongs to him. He's not a big fan of humans, seeing them as cancer in his world. He's even enslaved and killed humans in the past to impose his rule and dominion. Talk about being a bit of a bully. But Azazel has one big goal in life to be free from his prison in the Brimstone Dimension. And how does he plan on doing that? By having kids, of course. He's got this whole scheme going where he fathers numerous children in order to have one with the power to free him permanently. I mean, talk about a dad who expects a lot from his kids. Azazel has a lot of powers, including teleportation, superhuman reflexes, agility, night vision, and even the ability to climb walls like a spider. But what really sets him apart is his ability to generate and project streams of paralyzing energy from his hands. I mean, <laughs> Talk about having a shocking personality. And let's not forget his swordsmanship skills. He's a master swordsman, which is pretty impressive considering he's been alive since biblical times. I mean, he's had a lot of time to practice, so it's no wonder he's so good. But here's the thing. There are rumors that Azazel might actually be a demon or at least have the blood of one. With a name like that, it's not too far-fetched. He's even battled Mephisto and others for the title of Satan. I mean, talk about a job title with some serious clout. Sh 
Shadow King. Oh boy, where do I even start with this Shadow King character? Well, let me tell you, this guy is something else. He's like the ultimate creep, a real telepathic stalker. So, apparently, he used to have a physical body when he was known as Amal Farouk, but after he faced off against Charles Xavier, his body kicked the bucket and he became this psionic entity known as the Shadow King. Talk about a serious case of separation anxiety. But here's the kicker, this guy is immortal. Yeah, you heard that right, he can't be killed at least not in his astral form. I guess you could say he's like a bad smell that just will not go away. He's also a bit of a squatter, taking over the bodies of others while he's hanging out on the astral plane. <laughs> I mean, how rude is that? Imagine just minding your own business on the astral plane, trying to catch some Zs, and then boom, this guy comes in and takes over your body like it's a cozy Airbnb. Oh, and don't even get me started on his telepathy. This dude is seriously powerful like more powerful than Professor X. I can just imagine him strutting around the astral plane with a pair of shades on saying, I'm the best telepath of all time. Of all time! Hmm, but hey, at least he's got one weakness. He can only be harmed by telepathy or certain magic weapons. After everything said and done, the Shadow King is the ultimate party crasher. He's always hanging around where he's not wanted, taking over bodies, and just generally being a pain in the butt. But hey, at least he's good for a laugh. Right. Less dangerous. Who are you? What do you want with us? My name is Sinister. Mr. Sinister. Okay, so Mr. Sinister is a supervillain from Marvel Comics. He's this genetically mutated dude who's obsessed with social Darwinism and has a knack for cloning, creating, enhancing, and controlling mutant abilities. He's basically the X-Men's worst nightmare. And let's not forget that he has a super creative name that screams, I am a bad guy. But you know what's hilarious about Mr. Sinister? His origin story is just a hot mess. Nathaniel Essex, the man who became Mr. Sinister, started off as a passionate scientist who cared for his wife and son. But then tragedy struck when his son died and he became this seclusive, mad scientist who experimented on his own son's body to figure out what went wrong. Uh, like, dude, that's, uh, that's just messed up. Uh, and then he meets Apocalypse, who promises him power beyond belief, and suddenly he's all like, oh, I guess I'll just become a supervillain now. Huh, no biggie. And let's not forget that he got his name from his dying wife, who basically hated his guts and called him Sinister. That's just sad, man. But Mr. Sinister's powers are pretty impressive. We'll give him that. He's telepathic, can manipulate minds, and has all sorts of regenerative abilities. Plus, he's a scientific genius, which is pretty cool if you're into that sort of thing. But I mean, come on, can we just take a moment to appreciate his fabulous cape and ridiculous costume? It's like he's trying to outdo Dracula or something. <laughs> juggernaut. Ah, the Juggernaut, one of the most iconic villains in the X-Men universe. With his mystical origins and immense strength, he's a force to be reckoned with. First of all, let us talk about his strength. The Juggernaut is incredibly strong, capable of lifting more than a thousand tons and shattering mountains. He can even use buildings as bludgeoning weapons, which is pretty impressive if you ask me. And if that's not enough, he's virtually indestructible. He possesses extreme durability, is immune to all earthly toxins, poisons and diseases, and can survive without food, water, sleep or oxygen for months. But what really makes the Juggernaut a formidable opponent is his unstoppable momentum. Once he starts moving, he's virtually impossible to stop. He doesn't tire from physical activity and can survive even when he's just a skeleton. However, opponents with sufficient physical or mystical strength can turn his unstoppable movement against him, which has been done by the Hulk, Scar, and Thor. The Juggernaut also possesses a mystical force field that grants him additional invulnerability to physical and energetic attacks. He's virtually unstoppable when his force field is at its maximum, and he could even resist Thor's God Blast, although Thor was weakened at the time. He can heal quickly, as seen when he was stabbed through the eyes and the wounds healed almost immediately. However, the Juggernaut does have a weakness. He's vulnerable to mental attacks. This weakness can be exploited by removing his helmet, which normally protects him from such attacks. But he circumvented this weakness by wearing a metal skull cap inside his main helmet. If he loses his helmet, he can magically recreate it from available raw materials, assuming he possesses the full power of the gem. Toad Toad, the villain with a name that's just as unappealing as his abilities. This guy has got some serious powers, but they come with some seriously unappealing side effects. First off, this guy can jump like a toad on steroids. He can cover some serious ground with his superhuman leaping abilities, which is pretty impressive. But let's talk about that tongue. <laughs> It's like something out of a horror movie. Toad can extend his tongue up to 25 feet long and use it to constrict people like a boa constrictor. Ah, and if that's not enough, the tip of his tongue secretes a mind-controlling pheromone. <laughs> Yikes, stay away from this guy. But that's not all. Toad also has a quick-drying adhesive that he spits at his opponents. It's like super glue on steroids, and it's not something you want to mess with. And if he needs to climb up walls or ceilings, he can use a sticky solution from his hands and feet that also doubles as a paralytic toxin. Not only is he sticky, but he's also dangerous. But all this 
these powers come with a price. Toad has a chemical imbalance that leads to some seriously unstable behavior. And let's not forget the fact that he smells like a swamp due to his secretion and lack of hygiene. It's like being stuck in an elevator with a skunk. Today's most recent mutation gives him the ability to control amphibians and blast oxygen from them, with enough force to knock someone down. But let's be honest, that's not as impressive as the fact that he can stick to walls and ceilings like some sort of creepy crawly. Toad may have some impressive powers, but he's definitely not someone you want to invite to your next party, unless you're into the whole mind-controlling, sticky and foul-smelling thing. Strife. Well, 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 looks like we've got a clone of Cable on our hands, folks. But this ain't just any old clone. Oh no, this is Strife, the founder of the Mutant Liberation Front and the creator of the Legacy Virus. Huh, and get this, he was raised by none other than Apocalypse himself. Talk about a dysfunctional family tree. So, let's take a minute to recap how Strife came to be. Nathan Summers, also known as Cable, was infected by the techno-organic virus as a child, which left him with a death sentence. But fear not, the Ascani, a group from 2000 years in the future, came to the rescue. Well, kinda. They cloned Nathan and made a new baby, but this time without the virus. Voila! Strife was born. But here's where things get a bit wonky. Strife was taken by Apocalypse and raised as his own. <laughs> Can you imagine growing up with that guy as your dad? Yikes! But it's not all bad. Strife was genetically augmented, which gave him superhuman strength, speed, stamina, durability, reflexes, and intelligence. I mean, who needs a good education when you've got genetic modifications, am I right? But wait, there's more. Strife also has telepathy and telekinesis, just like his genetic brother, Cable. Mm, but here's the kicker. His powers are even more powerful than Cable's because he doesn't have to use them to hold back the techno-organic virus. So, in a way, Strife is like the upgraded version of Cable. Who needs the latest iPhone when you've got a genetically modified super-powered clone? And let's not forget, Strife is the creator of the Legacy Virus. You know, that, uh, that virus that killed all those mutants. Yeah, that one. I guess you could say Strife was not really living up to his name as the savior of mutants. More like the bringer of death. But hey, no one's perfect, right? Strife's origin story is a bit complicated to say the least. But one thing's for sure, he's one powerful mutant. Mojo. Mojo is one of those villains who always seems to be up to something. He's an alien supervillain who loves to manipulate and control people, especially the X-Men and Excalibur. One of Mojo's most notable skills is his manipulation. He has a way of getting inside people's heads and making them do his bidding. Whether it's through mind control or just good old-fashioned persuasion, Mojo knows how to get what he wants. And what he wants is usually pretty nefarious, like taking over the world or enslaving the X-Men. But Mojo's manipulation skill is not the only trick up his sleeve. He's also been known to possess people, taking control of their bodies and using them to do his bidding. It's like something out of a horror movie, only with aliens and superheroes. And let's not forget about Mojo's brute strength. He may not be the biggest or strongest villain out there, but he's definitely got some muscle behind him. He can hold his own in a fight and is not afraid to get his hands dirty. But when you combine his strength with his manipulation skills, he becomes a real force to be reckoned with. Romulus, Lupus Sapiens, <laughs> more like Lupus Super Badass. That's right, we're talking about Romulus, the ancient villain and enemy of Wolverine. This guy is the founder of Weapon X and can be considered the main antagonist of the entire Wolverine franchise. Talk about one big bad wolf. Little is known about Romulus's origins, but it's believed that he's been alive for thousands of years. He's been seen in Wolverine's dreams, fighting prehistoric men and even being an emperor of the Roman Empire. But that's not all, folks. Nick Fury revealed to Wolverine that Romulus has been manipulating his family bloodline for centuries. Talk about a master manipulator. But wait, there's more. Romulus is also the one responsible for taking Wolverine's son from his dead mother's womb and raising him to be a ruthless killer. And get this, he lied to him and told him that Wolverine killed his mother. What a jack. But let's not forget about Romulus's powers and abilities. This guy is a powerhouse, just like Wolverine. He's got superhuman strength, speed and stamina, and a healing factor to boot. And let's not forget about his claws, because what is a wolf without some sharp, deadly claws? Romulus is one tough customer. He's been around for thousands of years, manipulating and causing chaos wherever he goes. He's responsible for some of the most heinous acts against Wolverine and his family, and he's got the powers and abilities to back up his villainy. So, if you ever come across Romulus, be sure to watch your back and bring some silver bullets. <laughs> You're gonna need them. Sauron, Carl Lycos, the energy vampire who turns into the weird pterodactyl known as Sauron, has quite the backstory. Bitten by a mutant pteranodon as a child, Lycos discovered he could drain the life force of other organisms to survive. As an adult, he became a physician and treated patients through hypnosis while secretly robbing them of energy. But it was absorbing the energy of the mutant Havoc that triggered his transformation into the vampiric Sauron. In his Sauron form, Lycos is superhumanly strong, possesses sharp talons, and has a lethal beak. But his most terrifying weapon is his amplified hypnotic ability that gives his victims terrifying delusions. And if he absorbs the life force of a mutant, he gains a portion of their power 
powers as well. Despite his villainous tendencies, Lycos fell in love with Tanya, the daughter of the man who took him in after his father's death. But when he transformed into Sauron and threatened Tanya's life, he fled to the Savage Land to die alone. However, he survived and resumed his relationship with Tanya until he was manipulated by the Weapon X program and reverted to his Sauron form. Lycos is a complex character, torn between his desire for love and his need for energy to survive. He's a skilled physician, but also a dangerous energy vampire with hypnotic powers and the ability to transform into a monstrous weird pterodactyl. So, if you ever come across Carl Lycos, be sure to keep a safe distance and watch your back. You never know when he might be tempted to drain your life force. Vertigo Vertigo is not your average member of the Savage Land mutates. This artificially enhanced mutate has the ability to project waves of psionic distortion that wreak havoc on the nervous systems of other living beings. She can cause extreme vertigo, nausea, and disorientation, rendering her opponents unconscious and even interfering with their superhuman powers. Vertigo can focus her power on one or more individuals or affect every being within range, the exact limit of which is unknown. It's like having a personal earthquake machine that only affects your enemies. And if that wasn't enough, she gained a mysterious new power in her appearance in The Avengers, the ability to put her victims into a deep slumber. Talk about a versatile villain. But don't let her psionic powers fool you. Vertigo is also a skilled fighter and a member of Mr. Sinister's Marauders. Well, a clone of hers, anyway. She's not afraid to get her hands dirty and will do whatever it takes to achieve her goals. And with her powers of disorientation and control, she's a force to be reckoned with. Blob. When it comes to the Blob, you don't want to get on his bad side. This mutant villain is a bully by nature, relying on his immense weight and superhuman strength to intimidate and overpower his enemies. But don't let his thuggish demeanor fool you. The Blob is also near invulnerable, which makes him a tough opponent to take down. Despite his brutish attitude, the Blob has a loyal friendship with fellow X-Men villain Unus, and will often ally with him out of true companionship rather than opportunity. But don't mistake his loyalty for weakness. The Blob is a force to be reckoned with on his own. As his name suggests, the Blob is immensely heavy, which makes him nearly impossible to move once he plants his feet. And with his near invulnerability, he can withstand even the toughest attacks from his enemies. But it's his superhuman strength that truly sets him apart from the rest, which allows him to overpower even the most powerful of opponents. Horsemen of Apocalypse The Horsemen of Apocalypse is a group of villains that strikes fear in the hearts of mutants and humans alike. Chosen by the powerful mutant Apocalypse, these elite champions are tasked with spreading chaos and sparking a massive war in which only the strong would survive. It's survival of the fittest on steroids. While some members of the Horsemen were brainwashed or enslaved, others served willingly and were supervillains in their own right. These villains were some of Marvel's most prominent heroes, turned to the dark side by the promise of power and domination. And Sabar Nur, also known as Apocalypse, is the leader of the Horsemen and one of the most powerful mutants in the Marvel Universe. He recruited mutants with unique abilities and transformed them into his loyal followers the Horsemen. Some of the most notable members of the Horsemen include Death, one of the original Horsemen and a powerful entity in his own right. There's also Archangel, a former X-Men member who became one of Apocalypse's Horsemen after being brainwashed and transformed. Wolverine, Gambit, and Psylocke were also brainwashed and transformed into Horsemen, despite previously being members of the X-Men. Famine, one of the original Horsemen, was a mutant with the ability to manipulate. Pestilence, another original Horseman, had the ability to spread disease and plague. War, the third original Horseman, could manipulate fire. Other members of the Horsemen included former X-Men members like Polaris, Sunfire, and Banshee, as well as villains like Grim Reaper, Ahab, and Deathbird. Even powerful heroes like Sentry and Hulk were not immune to Apocalypse's brainwashing and were transformed into Horsemen. Donald Pierce Donald Pierce is a cyborg villain in the Marvel Universe, known for his superhuman strength and lightning-fast reflexes. He's like the Terminator, but with a better sense of fashion. And speaking of fashion, he first appeared as a high-ranking member of the Hellfire Club Inner Circle, where he held the position of White Bishop. He probably has a closet full of fancy suits and secret society robes. When he battled Wolverine, Nightcrawler, and Colossus, it was revealed that he was a cyborg. Wolverine nearly severed his arm, but Pierce just brushed it off like it was a paper cut. His cyborg body gives him great resistance to damage, and even if his body is destroyed, as long as his head remains intact, he'll probably survive. It's like he's playing a permanent game of keep the head, but with uh, much higher stakes. Aside from his physical advantages, Donald Pierce is a genius in robotics, cybernetics, and electronics. He's like Tony Stark but with a few extra screws loose. Donald Pierce is a dangerous villain with a high-tech advantage. He's like the evil version of Iron Man, but with a darker sense of humor. Madeline Pryor Oh boy, Madeline Pryor sure has a family tree that'll make any therapist cringe. 
She's Cyclops' first wife, Cable's mum, and a clone of Jean Grey. Ah, talk about a complicated family dynamic, but that's not all. Madeline has got some serious mutant powers too. As a clone of Jean Grey, she has telekinesis and telepathy, which are extremely weak. But when she became the Goblin Queen, she got a power boost from Eldritch Magic and could warp reality within a limited area. Sounds pretty nifty, but I bet her neighbours were not too thrilled about the warped reality in their yards. Then she came back from the dead, because, huh, comics, as a psionic energy echo thingy that could use some of her old powers, but just not as well. She could still read minds, create illusions, and erase memories, which would come in handy if she ever needed to make herself forget about that time she was married to a mutant with laser eyes. But wait, there's more. Madeline also became a healer with the power of eldritch flames. She fixed Cyclops' eye beams, cured a dwarf, and even gave Rogue control over her powers. Moreover, Doctor Strange beware, because we've got a new healer in town. And as the Red Queen of the Hellfire Club, Madeline has some seriously impressive powers. She resurrected someone's body, transferred someone's essence into the said body, controlled someone's mind, and atomized a gun with her mind. I'm not sure what the gun did to deserve that, but I guess it's safe to say that Madeline is not one to mess with. Madeline Pryor is one complicated lady with some seriously impressive powers. <laughs> Let's just hope she doesn't use them to warp reality at the next family reunion. Cassandra Nova, and now it's time to meet a mutant of incomparable power. It's Cassandra Nova, the evil twin sister of Professor X. And let me tell you, this lady is not to be messed with. First of all, she's a genetic mastermind. She can copy the DNA of other beings and use it to construct physical bodies for herself. Talk about stealing someone's identity. And if that's not enough, she can also manipulate the DNA of others, breaking it down at the molecular level. I guess you could say she's the ultimate gene thief. But that's not all, folks. She also has some serious psionic powers. She can read minds project her thoughts into others' minds, and even manipulate them to do her bidding. Moreover, she can possess the minds of others and use their bodies as her own. Talk about creepy. And let's not forget about her ability to release an astral form. That's right. She can project herself onto astral planes or the physical plane, and even create psionic objects and manipulate her environment. I guess you could say she's the ultimate ghost in the machine. But wait, there's more. She's also got telekinetic abilities, enabling her to manipulate living beings, inanimate objects, and even energy. She can levitate herself or others, and even project a telekinetic shield capable of withstanding missile blasts. And she can also release devastating force blasts by focusing her mental energy on a specific target. Talk about a one-woman wrecking crew. So, if you ever find yourself face-to-face -face with Cassandra Nova, just remember to hold on to your DNA and your mind, because if she gets her hands on either of those, <laughs> you're in for a world of trouble. Onslaught. It's time to meet the brainchild of Professor X and Magneto. Onslaught is the mutant with all the powers and a personality to match. This guy is so powerful that he can manipulate reality itself. I mean, who needs a genie in a bottle when you have Onslaught around? He can create pocket universes like it's no big deal. I bet he even has a pocket square in his suit to match. But that's not all, folks. Onslaught can absorb mutants into his being and permanently gain their powers. It's as if he's playing Pokemon with his enemies. But instead of catching them all, he's consuming them all. Aha! <laughs> Gotta eat them all, Onslaught. And let's not forget about his impervious armor, which is nigh invulnerable and nearly impossible to crack. I mean, even Thor and an enraged, bannerless Hulk couldn't take him down. It's like he's wearing a suit made of vibranium, adamantium, and pure stubbornness. <laughs> Impressive, to say the least. But the real kicker is his telepathic immunity. Onslaught's mind is so strong that it can't be manipulated or read by anyone. It's like he has a mental firewall that's so strong that not even the best hackers in the world can get through. Talk about being a tough nut to crack. So, there you have it, folks. Onslaught, the mutant that opposes Franklin Richards. It's like he's the ultimate superhero and supervillain, with a side of reality manipulation and a dash of telepathic immunity all rolled into one. Who needs Spider-Man or Thanos when you have Onslaught around? Dakin. It's time for the biological son of Wolverine to show up. The mutant Dakin, or Wolverine 2, has got regenerative immortality, ageless immortality, self-resurrection, foreign chemical immunity, disease immunity, and he's also immune to telepathy. Talk about being overpowered. Dakin also has superhumanly acute senses that are so heightened he can see through walls, hear a pin drop from a mile away, and smell a rat a mile off. And as if that's not enough, he's got superhuman durability, stamina, reflexes, speed, agility, and mental process. But wait, yeah, there's more. Darkin's deadliest ability is his pheromone control. He can manipulate his pheromones to instill fear, happiness, depression, sexual arousal, and a false sense of security to other beings. He can even manipulate technology and electronics. 
It's like he's got a superpower for every occasion. I mean, seriously, who needs friends when you've got all these powers? Dakin can just create his own army of pheromone-controlled minions. He could be the next Marvel villain to take over the world. But let's hope he doesn't get too full of himself, or he might end up with a big head. Literally, his healing factor could cause his head to grow. All jokes aside, Dakin is one heck of a mutant. He's got more abilities than anyone can count, and he's not afraid to use them. But let's hope he doesn't get too cocky, or he might end up getting his claws stuck in a sticky situation. Nimrod. Ah, Nimrod. The time-traveling, mutant-hunting, adaptable, self-repairing, highly advanced sentinel. Sounds like a real party animal, doesn't he? I mean, who wouldn't want to hang out with a robot that can shoot plasma and disintegration blasts while levitating tons of metal with magnetic energy? That's like the ultimate party trick, am I right? And let's not forget about Nimrod's superhuman strength, which is estimated to be around 100 tons. I mean, sure, <laughs> it's not quite Hulk level, but it's still pretty impressive for a machine. I wonder if Nimrod ever hits the gym to keep in shape. But let's talk about Nimrod's time-traveling abilities. I mean, it's like the robot version of Doctor Who, right? Only instead of a TARDIS, it's got a wonky time device that sends it jumping around the time stream like a kangaroo on a pogo stick. Nimrod's force fields protect it from most physical and energy assaults. It's like the robot version of a force field wearing superhero, only with less spandex and more metal. But hey, at least Nimrod is always learning from its previous encounters and actively working on countermeasures. It's like the ultimate overachiever, always striving to be better and smarter and stronger. Nimrod may be a deadly mutant hunting machine from an alternate reality, but it's also kind of funny if you think about it. I mean... Who knew a robot could be so quirky and lovable? Sentinels Dr. Bolivar Trask, the creator of the Sentinels, was motivated by his fear of mutants subjugating humanity. But ironically, he fathered mutant children himself, one of whom had the power of precognition. Trask went to great lengths to hide his son's power, but his creations eventually captured him and followed their programming to destroy all mutants. The X-Men, as the protectors of mutant kind, became their primary targets. Over the years, the Sentinels evolved and became more sophisticated, with advanced scanning equipment and the ability to neutralize mutant powers. The Sentinels have been a constant threat to the X-Men and have been reprogrammed by villains such as Onslaught to carry out their nefarious plans. The Sentinels have gone through several iterations, starting with the Mark I and evolving into the more advanced Mark II, Mark III, Mark IV, Mark V, Mark VI and Mark VII models. They're incredibly powerful, possessing a vast array of energy weapons and other devices to detain mutants. They can fly and are highly durable and resistant to extreme temperatures. They also have advanced scanning and tracking abilities, including the ability to detect mutants from a distance and devise plans to neutralize their powers. The Sentinels have been used in various story arcs, including the Onslaught Saga, where they were reprogrammed to capture and detain superhumans in New York City to feed the psionic energy of Onslaught. The Stark Sentinels were also created by Tony Stark under the influence of the Red Skull, with the intention of eliminating the world's superhuman population. Marvelous verdict, we hope you enjoyed our tour through the twisted minds of the X-Men's most notorious villains. From the magnetic megalomaniac that is Magneto, to the shape-shifting saboteur Mystique, these bad guys have kept our favorite heroes on their toes for decades. But let's not forget that without them, the X-Men wouldn't be the legendary team we know and love today. So, let's raise a glass, or, or a mutant power, to these dastardly fiends, and hope that they'll continue to give us thrilling battles and hilarious moments for years to come. Thanks for watching, and remember, it's not easy being evil, but it sure is fun.